Thompson, everybody. This is Thompson. I love the jacket and the pants. It's a really good look. You do? I do. I, I like that jacket for me. You, it's fancy, right? You don't think I look kind of like Colonel Sanders after hours? Like he had a hard day at work and he like took off the tie and went... Yeah, that's exactly what went through my head. Uh-oh. <laughs> Colonel Sanders after hours. Well, I had a bow tie backstage. Oh, you mean the tie? And I looked in the mirror. Well, it was like this before and I looked in the mirror and I thought I looked like the love child between Colonel Sanders and Prince with his sparkly jacket. Like no? <laughs> no, I, I kind of like it, but I like the I like it loose just like that. Loose. Yeah, yeah, like 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 just, this. It's like yeah. I can't live by your drools, man. Exactly. Yeah, like that. <sighs> How are you doing? The movie looks good. Hey, thanks. Yeah. I think it is. Yeah? You sure? No, really. Oh, know, good, good. I know you're supposed to like come on to these things and say how much you like the thing, but I really like it. Well, that's good. That's, that's great. great. Right? What's it about? It's about being a black face in a mostly white place. Oh, I feel your pain. Right? Yeah. <laughs> but more than about race in America, it sort of is about identity, about who you are in relation to what people expect of you or assume that you are. Mm. And you know all about that, too. A little bit. I mean, you know, people do, you know, make assumptions based on accent. I mean, if you're a... I mean, one of the rare uh, middle-aged white guys in late-night television, I mean, that's... <laughs> I mean, talk about trying to break that glass ceiling. Uh, right. I don't know. I mean, because you, I mean, because you look like, I mean, because I look like every other guy who does late night television, uh, people assume. Wait a minute, wait a minute. What about these socks? Well, yeah, but the socks ain't me. I just put them on and take them off. That ain't me. Sure, but I don't see anybody else on late night with a pair of socks like that. Oh, I'm sure they got them. They just don't wear them. Mm. Yeah. Where are you from? Los Angeles. Really? Yeah. What's that like? Y y it's behind us. Look at it. I think that's a, an amalgam of Reno and Vegas yeah. out there, isn't it? That, do that does look like Reno. I've been to Reno. I've been oh, lording it over everyone with your big swanky stories. I've been to Reno. <laughs> I've been to Reno twice. Really? Yeah. Why? Do you like crystal meth? Is that why you're there? <laughs> yep. I do, uh, I, I actually had a nice time in Reno, I think. What'd you do? Ah, uh, stand-up comedy. Ah. Huh. Yeah. Huh. Well, I enjoyed it. Did they? I don't know. It's hard to tell. Is Reno one of those places what happens in Reno stays in Reno, or can you take it outside of Reno, too? I think, uh, it, it ca you, you can take it out of Reno, but you probably want to just forget about it and leave it in Reno. I'll leave it there. That should be the thing. What happens in Reno, you probably want to forget about it and just not talk about it. <laughs> That's what I look forward to your angry, you know, things. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You should call their people, get in touch, and say, you what, know, I got, I got hi, we know it's Craig. <laughs> yeah, I know. Remember me? Yeah. So, what part of LA are you from? Hollywood. Really? Yeah. That's amazing. I never meet anyone who's from here. I know it's rare. My dad. Except my kids. You what? know. Uh huh. What? Well, oh, my right. kids are from here. Yeah, they. And you meet them daily. Oh, I arrange. I schedule meetings with them. Duh. <laughs> Tell me what you've been up to, youngsters. You just, like, pencil them in occasionally? Yeah, you know, you gotta mark the spot. Well, my parents were never together, so my dad moved to New York, so I sort of split my time between L.A. and Brooklyn when I was growing up. Ah, he's all yeah. right, I get it. Well, I don't know if I mean nice, but I no, get no, no. it, yeah. I, I, I think it's great. Very cosmopolitan. Ex extremely. Have you ever uh, driven across America? Yep, twice. Do you like it? Love it. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's fascinating. I know. You know when I knew I wanted to be an American? When? I was driving through Arkansas, mm -hmm. and there was a drive through <laughs> there was a drive through outlet where you could buy a gun, a bottle of whiskey, and fireworks, and gas up your car all at the same time. Oh, man. See? <laughs> See, I don't know about your people, but my people, we know how to multitask. Yeah. That's what I saw that place, I'm like, I want to be part of this so bad. Have you been... Well, you don't drink anymore, that's true, right? Well, you know, I don't, that's true, but I did a lot before. I know you yeah. did. Yeah. Okay, so in those days, did you ever go to New Orleans and get, like, a pina colada to go? In the no, drive? no, I went to New Orleans, but I've only ever been to New Orleans sober, which is, uh, you know, alarming enough. Uh... <laughs> 
But that's that. I used to live in New York when I was drinking. I used to live in, in the, the Lower East Side. Lower East Side, yeah. Yeah, East that's where my dad was too. Oh, really? Yeah. I maybe know your dad. Maybe you do. Yeah, yeah. You're young. I'm probably about the same age as your dad. My dad used to really like to drink too. So. Bye, bye. <laughs> What's this? Just tell me his first name. Mark. I know your dad. Right. So what do you think about the neighborhood? Because it's changed so wildly. Yeah, you know, the, the, I went back to the East Village to my old apartment yeah. recently to take a selfie uh, in front of my old apartment. <laughs> it happens as you get older, don't worry about it. And anyway, I did it and I went, like where I used to live was so violent and scary and now it's like people are, you know, Tompkins Square Park, there are like dogs in it, no one's trying to eat them, oh, you know. Yeah. Uh, I know, so my, that was my introduction to New York. I was like 10 years old. It was the first time I'd ever been and my dad lived in the Lower East Side. And I remember there were two people in the alley doing drugs and I woke my dad up to tell him that he needed to call the police. And it was just so naive because that's, you know, now I miss, I miss those people. Where'd they go? They're in Reno, but, uh, <laughs> but, <laughs> but. I don't know, it's a funny thing, because I still have friends from that time who live right. there, and uh, it's, you know, there's something definitely goes away when that goes away, but it's better. It's better when all that crap goes away. Yeah, I think so. I mean, the, the things that make New York charming will always exist. Yeah, you know, you'll get that pizza and urine smell wherever you go in New York. True. Uh, that's about it for me, really. I, no, I like New York. I love New York. I think... I think that, you know, if you live in New York for any length of time, you always kind of, when you leave, I don't know if you thought this, whenever you leave New York, you think, there's a party going on somewhere and I'm kind of not at it. Yeah, you but know? see, but I am always at the party in New York. Oh, yeah? No, no. I just mean that I, the, the reason why I like being in New York is because I'm a night owl. I have a really hard time in Los Angeles. Sometimes I feel like an, an odd person because I'm up too late. In New York... You are up too late. I know. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. you are. I mean, in, in L.A., the only people that are up late are the people that don't realize that L.A. is a place for work. Exactly. You know. Uh, I just like that you can get a sandwich at any hour in New York. Oh, you can get that in L.A. No. I got a ref refrigerator in my house. You just go right to it, open up. <laughs> well, give me your address. It's complicated. It wouldn't work. I, uh, no. Do you, do you like sandwiches? Well, as long as they've got vegetables on them, yeah. Oh, okay. What do you mean? I just, I don't know. T sandwiches... Why, because I'm Scottish? Is that it? <laughs> oh, my people don't get to have sandwiches? Is that the thing? You are coming down hard on the no. racist today. What's happening? No, you know what I feel about the race thing is, weirdly what? enough, um, this is what I genuinely believe. The, the race problem is America's shame. Mm. In the same way is that um, the class problem is the uh, European shame and the Indian shame, the, the, the United Kingdom shame. It's about class. It's not about race and no. class. But, yeah. it, but, it, it, but it, it, the, the, in the U.S., it's, it's the shame of the country. And we, it's a, it seems to be an unsolvable problem. People keep, uh, keep attacking it and attacking it. I think and because it's a thing that we're just uncomfortable talking about. Well, we've got you know, to get more comfortable talking about it. Yeah, I mean, that's the thing that's been interesting, actually, about this movie. No, no, no. I, I realize that that's why we're talking no, about it. No, no, no. But it's, it's opened up a lot of conversations, I think, yeah. for, for people. And, and to me, that's an incredible thing that film can do sometimes. You know, my, uh, one, of, uh, one of my favorite favorite guest on this show and a guy who talks very eloquently about it is Dr. Cornell West. Do you know Dr. West? Yeah. And he talked, when they were doing that thing, they were going to remove the N-word from uh, Mark Twain's Huckleberry Finn. Mm. And he was against it. He said, no, you know, they mustn't do that because it removes the, he said, because he talks so, you know, in such a great way, he said, no, that removes the funk of history. You've got to leave it in there so we know it was yeah, there. and American history is really funky. Yeah, it is, yeah. You know? Fascinating and, and, and unique and different, and we got to look at it. And, yeah, spectacular. And I think the, on, the only way that we sort of progress is to look at it is to take an honest inventory and go, okay. Well, I think you're great. I think you're great, too. Well, let's stop now before it goes south. <laughs> we'll be right back, everybody. One ding. We must speak German. Two dings. We are still German. <laughs> Three dings. Dracula. <laughs> Four dings. Italian Bill Clinton. What's the coming to go? 
Five things is room service. Room isn't service it? or the phone. Just the phone, I think. Just the phone. <laughs> so if I think this five times, the phone will ring? That's correct. <laughs> <laughs> hello, who's this? It's Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, you? hello. This is great. I'm a huge fan. And let me tell you, of all the talk shows I've watched, this one is the most recent. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, look, we're, we're uh, doing a case of a missing log tonight. You haven't seen a log around anyway. Haven't, oh. that, there hasn't been a bit of wood in your house uh, been misplaced anywhere. No, uh, no. Perhaps, <laughs> exactly. perhaps, perhaps put somewhere that it shouldn't have been, and yeah, then, uh, no, and then I, repercussions I, follow later on. Uh, I think the housekeeper has it. No, all right. Uh, what the hell is that? What was that?